Welcome to the breakdown where we break down all the messed up movies. Today, February 13th, is my birthday and I'm 22 years old. However, today is also the three year anniversary of me raw dogging YouTube and birthing this channel. It was this day that I was in my dorm freshman year and I said, you know what, let's do this. And it was probably one of, if not the best decision I ever made. I'm definitely the real life version of the ultimate lucky student. It's my birthday, but the only gift I'd like from y'all is your continued support. And you can do that just by clicking the like button and showing YouTube that people really like these videos and that they should share it more. And subscribe if you've been binging me, but you haven't done it yet. So hang out and let's see what audition is about. Audition is one of the famous Takashi Miike classics. Based on a book written by Ryu Murakami, it's all about a widower who decides to find a new wife seven years after his late wife's death. The way he does it is by having an audition for a story where whoever candidate impresses him is who he will pursue. Well, regardless of how you feel about that, the woman he does pick isn't the safest option. If you're watching this on Valentine's Day, this movie fits the romantic day as well. So if you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue to go, huh? I can already see the comments. Spooky, you don't sound good. No, I'm just chilling today. I don't feel like shouting. The movie begins with a little squirt bringing a get well gift to his mom. Doesn't look like Ryoko here is coming back. Her husband holds her as she takes her last breath. So now he is a widower. The little boy comes in to see that his mother is resting now. But now it's just widower and his little son walking around town like Adam Sandler and that little boy. Seven years pass, and this looks like the intro to an anime movie in the 2000s. Looks like Widower, his name is Ayoyama, and his son have a great relationship. They are out fishing, and naturally the conversation they have parallels to the many fish in the sea waiting for the Widower to catch them. You know how they say it's plenty fish in the sea. Looks like Ayoyama caught a big one. This must be that fish gone caught before he went to go take the hunter exam. Even my references have father-son theme. My first time fishing with my dad, I caught a big ass catfish right before we left and he treated me like I was, like I was gone actually. I'm happy to see a father-son relationship in a movie. They live a quiet life with their dog, Gang. The son knows that Ayoyama should probably remarry. He's lonely, just look at him sitting there thinking about it. Ayoyama is a lonely, wealthy boss, and his assistant is getting married soon. She kind of teases him about it for some reason, almost rubbing it in his face. He meets up with a business friend at a bar, bartender looking like Nishikiyama. The friend mentions that these loud, unattractive girls contribute to the reason that Japan is finished. Ayoyama mentions he'd like to get married again. He wants to meet various women and see which one he likes best. Basically, the friend will organize an audition for a previous story they created so that whoever comes to the audition for a part might be an interest to Ayoyama. And when they had touchscreen cars back before I was born, that's how I know Ayoyama got a big bank account. Here are some of the women looking to be a part of that project that Ayoyama's friend is starting an audition for. Remember, it's really to have Ayoyama see if he likes any of them during the audition. The son comes in to mention that he brought a girlfriend home. Look how happy he is. First time I brought a girl home was on Thanksgiving high school, like junior year, something like that. And my people literally started taking pictures of us like we was on a red carpet or something. That's one of my favorite moments in life. Ayoyama finds interest in Asami Yamazaki here. She looks like a grown Sachiko from Corpse Party. Her applicant essay mentions her having a history in ballet before hurting her hip. Coming to terms with not doing ballet was like accepting death for her. It was an interesting essay for someone who has seen death firsthand. Now let's go over to the son and, and his little friend here. This is what y'all decide to do, read about dinosaurs. Her name is Teasing Master Takagi-san, a girl he met on the train. When I get a dog, I'm probably gonna call him Gang. That's a cool little name. And Pops, he leaves to go get some fresh air. Now that's a cool Pops right there. Something my dad would do. Is this me, Loki? Is this low-key me? Now it's time for the audition. 
Ayoyama doesn't feel right about finding a significant other this way, but it's too late now. So, expect an audition montage. It's the best way to explain it. I love how someone's mama just came up here too. Like, just look how, look how hard she's smiling. A lot of questions are sex-based, by the way. I wonder how did Mike get these people to come in and do this part? Did he say like, come audition for a part in audition as someone in an audition? Wow, <laughs> I wasn't expecting some nudity. I was surprised as that dude that saw the N-word on Spongebob. Some of the girls are just practically adorable, but now it's time for Yamazaki-san. She has a very sketch, uneventful acting history, works at a small bar, and lives cheap. Ayoyama is definitely feeling her as he takes over as the interviewer talking about her applicant essay. He's got a shortness of breath by being so impressed with her maturity. Later on, Ayoyama sets up a meetup with Asami. Look how excited he is to meet the woman of his dreams, even though he has to set up some dumb audition with various judging criteria. His business friend soon calls him about Asami's agent from the movie recording place he mentioned. That particular agent had been missing for over a year. Guess that spells trouble. Anyway, Ayoyama has a date with Asami where he asks about that agent, but she reveals she actually never met him. She just lied so that they didn't think she was just some random woman off the street. He doesn't really care though. Well, whatever the case, they seem to hit it off. Soon, we cut to Asami just laying on the floor. My PE teacher, all throughout elementary school, said don't sit like that. She's waiting on him to call her, and he's waiting to call her to give it time based on his friend's suggestion. She sits like that for four days straight. Another day at work, that assistant starts acting weird again, just staring at her boss. I wonder what her deal is. He ponders calling Asami, and she literally fell asleep waiting like that. Finally, he figures what the hey and calls, and she let it ring. And then that sack in the bag literally rolled around. Is someone in that bag? The two, they soon go out for drinks. I know they have a kampai right here, but kampai for my birthday too. Hold on, I got a phone call. It's my birthday. I'm gonna get phone calls. <laughs> what do you expect? Where was I? Fuck. <laughs> I know they do a kampai right here, but you know, kampai for my birthday as well. The only reason I know that is because I used to be a hostess trainer over back in Kamurocho, Tokyo. You know, just trained a lot of women to be hostess. Also, he tells her that the movie she auditioned for doesn't have the funding anymore. So that's his way of explaining the movie away. Just look at his face when she gets dropped off. It's a nice fit for Valentine's Day as well. Ayoyama goes to his son's room and he likes dinosaurs like how Deku likes All Might. He tells her about Asami who is only 24 years old, two years older than me. Also, I just noticed that for some reason, I usually call Japanese dudes by their last name but the girls by their first name. I call him Ayoyama even though his first name is Shigaharu. Soon they go to a seaside retreat. She looks like Jennifer Hills in the forest. Later at night, she later, later, <laughs> sorry, I just want to make sure I was recording. Later at night, she doesn't speak a word to him, but I suppose it's the night to get down and dirty. Before she rids his clothes, she wants him to see her body, where she actually has burn marks from when she was a wee little lass. Before they have sex, she makes him promise to only love her. Seems like that promise was broken a few times for her. Damn, they pull the covers over their head hard as hell. They like Sims. In the morning, he sees that she is nowhere to be found. In fact, she checked out of the hotel. The employee calls to let him know. Now, Ayama realizes how sus she is and thinks he misunderstood her. No matter what though, he can't forget about her. Anyway, he goes to the old ballet place she says she went to, but Leon Kennedy boarded it up. <laughs> Why did I say that? After breaking it down, he hears somebody inside playing the piano, some person in a wheelchair. Soon, the crazy guy turns around asking him personal questions about their relationship. Seems like this guy abused her when she used to practice ballet and gave her the burn marks. He goes to the bar she says she worked at called The Stone Fish, but it's closed since the owner was gruesomely murdered. This guy here doesn't recall Asami working at the bar at all. 
the last owner was chopped into pieces inside the bar. When the police investigated, they found three extra fingers, an extra ear, and an extra tongue. That really shocks Ayama to where he hallucinates seeing it. I don't think he would be able to watch my videos. While Ayama is out, someone sneaks into his home and sees a picture of his late wife, then turns to his favorite brand of liquor. Later that night, Ayoyama returns and gets a drink of that liquor and he starts feeling weird. Someone drugged his liquor. When he falls to the ground, we flash back to that date they had earlier, but we get more conversation we didn't hear the first time. She was abused by her aunt and uncle, beaten, pushed down the stairs. She had a painful home life back with her mother and stepfather too. Turns out this is a dream sequence where Ayoyama's past wife gets introduced to Asami. She says that she is no good. Then immediately after, the setting changes and Asami is itching to give Ayoyama some throat. Then immediately, Asami switches to Ayoyama's assistant. This is why she was acting so weird. So we are in Ayoyama's mind, you know, just getting a play of his memories and thoughts, and turns out that he had a sexual relationship with his assistant on at least one occasion. She expected a serious relationship to come out of it though, and he just passed her like a football. You remember that girl his son brought over? She attacks him next. I don't know why he thought about her in his dream, but maybe it's like he's he was attracted to her low key i don't know actually but he finally wakes up when he trips over a sack in asami's apartment whoever's in that sack got the greatest mobility of all time he moves like gojira turns out there's someone missing three of their fingers their tongue their ears and both their feet we know where the fingers and tongues and ears went to the guy hasn't eaten in so long that he begs for food asami is in the back and vomiting inside of a bowl she brings the vomit bowl over to the guy and he gobs it up like cheesecake vomit smells so terrible i used to have to clean it up all the time in my high school job that and dookie dookie all on the ceiling on the floor yes <laughs> A young projected Asami pats him like a dog and asks Ayoyama if he only loves her. I'm confused, is Ayoyama hallucinating the entire event or is he seeing what's going on but feeling random parts in his head? My guess is he's hallucinating. Okay, so we finally are in the real world now. I say that because we see him fall on the ground in his home. Asami really killed Gang, that's crazy. Now, we are getting to the imagery you see when you look up this movie. Asami is ready to torture Ayoyama. There he, go <laughs> there he goes, I always see this image, her looking back like that. She paralyzes him with an agent that will keep his nerves acting, saying his skin will get sensitive and he'll enjoy the pain. She injects it inside of his tongue. That must suck. It's like sleep paralysis. That's why I don't fall asleep on my back anymore. Next, she starts slicing her clothes off saying all guys are the same. She knows that he only did the audition so that he could find a girl he liked. She used L tier thinking to get to that conclusion. Using needles, she tortures the mess out of him while saying deeper and deeper and deeper. That's like one of the that's one of the high points of this scene. Must be really painful, but pain always tells the truth. Honestly, she looks a lot hotter as an evil woman. Then she sticks needles into his eyes. Only when you feel pain do you truly understand yourself. Next, she goes to torture his son too. She's torturing him because he loves his past wife and loves his son when he's only supposed to love her. Remember that promise she's acting like Aaron when she found out Andy dated Angela this wire can cut through flesh and bone she would make an excellent my hero academia villain demon slayer demon phantom troop member etc she wraps it around his leg and starts grinding at it and she enjoys every second of it and his foot is getting cut off and thrown away I love that sh I love that they showed her throwing the foot away at that angle I, I don't let me shut up. The right foot is next, but the sun comes home. Before the sun is seemingly attacked, Ayoyama just wakes up. He's back at the hotel with her in the bed. So it seems as if everything that happened after the sex was a nightmare. Like for real. She accepts his marriage proposal as they lay awake, but soon he falls back to sleep, getting back into the nightmare. 
The son escapes her drug attack and runs away, but he kicks her dumb hard. Look how hard he kicked her down the stairs. She's not surviving that at all. And oh yeah, her back's broke. She's done for. Ayama crawls towards and sees her body while his son calls the police. The son is very good at calling the police, calm and informative. I should take notes, I learned one good thing today. <laughs> anyway, she isn't dead yet and whispers to him, saying she was longing for his phone call. She didn't want to lose him and live alone. Loneliness. She went crazy after seeing how many bonds he has, but I guess that's how life is. The end. That was the best Takashi Miike movie for me. It was really great. Felt like I wasn't just watching a disturbing classic, but watching a Japanese classic. I recommend checking out this movie for yourself. Alright, let's get into some parallels and the middle moments and that spooky stuff. Now I wasn't lying when I said it's one of my favorite, if not the favorite, Takashi Miike film. One aspect of the film I enjoyed was the relationship between Aoyama and his son. But still, it really does suck being lonely and not having someone to connect with. Cinema Nippon has a great video reading between the lines and auditions, so be sure to check them out if you're interested. Most disturbed moment is easily feeling those pick of those needles, feeling that wire slice through meat and bone and ridding the feet. That was an excellent ending and disturbing without being all up in your face. Most enjoyable moment was father and son. It's good to see a good relationship between son and father. Oh, you remember that phone call that I got earlier? Guess who called? Father. And this leads perfectly into my next point. Another reason why I use Gohan, you know, as like the little channel mascot, is how he relates to his father and how he follows his father's footsteps. And that's it. Audition is a top tier Takashi Miike film. You can find it on Tubi. So uh, I'm just gonna go chill and play video games or something until the party tonight. I'll see you guys 10 days from now. I know that's a little late, but that is an important day too and I gotta prepare for it and frankly these group projects aren't gonna do themselves. You haven't seen Ichi the Killer in it print, why haven't you watched some videos yet? There you go, they're, they're right here, I mean <laughs> they're right here, why, why not? Click on them both right there to see some cool videos on those, like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe today to see some more disturbed stuff. Thanks for watching, Spooky out!